Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Frank here, working on the Cub Cadet Bulldozer. And I'm just tapping the holes on one of the bogey carrier plates. This plate goes in the, is one of the inside plates here in the bogey carrier and it's drilled and tapped for bolts which go through the bogey wheels. This whole assembly is turned upside down and will attach to the bottom of the box beam between the um, drive sprocket and the idler to support the the dozer and there'll be a set of uh, three of these carriers like this on each side of the tractor and I was tapping the holes with my uh, vintage craftsman tap and die tap and die set and this is the handle I was using to hold the tap one half 13 um, tap and I and, and this is a tap and die set from tap and die set that I've had for I don't know 30 at least 30 years it's old craftsman vintage craftsman tap and die set that has been a great set. I mean, it's high-speed steel. Everything's pretty good quality. Most of the taps are still in there. I don't don't tap a lot of half-inch 13 um, threads, but I realized I have an epic, another tap and die set that is just epic, and uh, I want to show this to you. It's on the floor here. This is Little Giant Tap and Die Wells Brothers Company. Number 40 uh, Greenfield Tap and Die Corporation. Greenfield, Massachusetts. This uh, set you know, goes from relatively small, I'm going to say maybe quarter tw quarter 20, up to, I don't know, inch, what is this, inch and a quarter seven. And it has another whole layer of taps and dies in here in the bottom. I mean, it's got a die handle, which has got to be three feet long. So, this is, this is just a wonderful set. Uh, this set was given to me by a dear friend I've known for 30 years. He retired and couldn't keep it in his, um, in his shop. So he passed it on to me. It came from his father who worked in a shipyard, Navy shipyard. And I'm going to say that this tap and die set was used to help build um, Navy ships in World War II. I, I don't know that for a fact, but given they lived in a town right next to the shipyard and based on his age and his father's age, I would say that's probably the case. So anyway, I'm going to finish tapping this hole and we'll move over to uh, the bogey carrier and start working on that.
All right, so I'm gonna just tack this up and we're gonna test fit it. All right, so I've got this first um, bogey carrier tacked up. Uh, put a couple pieces of angle iron on the top one on each side of the box beam and have holes drilled through it. So we'll drill through the box beam and bolt this to the box beam. Uh, so we can, you know, be able to remove it. I considered welding it together, but I, I think it's, it's best to have it bolted so it's at least serviceable. And um, if I jack this up a little bit more here, can take it out. See what it what it looks like. All right, so I think this will work. Lower that down. I just ordered 20 more of these wheels. The website had a free shipping deal if you ordered $200 or more. And so that came out to, that got me free shipping to save me 80 bucks on shipping. So the next thing to do is to go ahead and I think I'm gonna tack up a couple more of these. I have enough plates cut out for a second one and I just have two of the five pieces I need for the third one. I did just put a new 4x4 sheet of quarter inch on the table. So we'll fill the table up and cut some more pieces out of out of that hey guys back in the shop today I've been thinking a lot about uh, my design for the bogey carriers got to sleep on it I've come up with what I think may be an issue and I've got a solution for it the way I have the bogey carrier design basically this whole area between the wheels is enclosed and I'm concerned that you know dirt will get in here and I have no way of of you know cleaning it out so I've come up with a new design I'll show you I've got the G code already generated for it so I've decided to come and create this space between the bogey wheels of course this the this is the plate the wheel hangs down you know below this uh, I think if I remember correctly the diameter of this arc is three inches the wheel is four inches so um, this will give me some space now this will just be for the outer the two outer plates I think the inner plate will stay the same I want it to capture the track and hold hold the chain from moving side to side firmly. So I'm not going to make those gaps on the inside plates. And by inside plates, I mean the ones in here on either side. I want the track to be confined in here pretty well. But I'm going to open up the outside plates here with a, an opening.
So I've only got this tack together, so I'll take this apart. I'm waiting for the rest of the wheels, bogey wheels, to arrive. They'll be, it'll probably be a week before they come. I don't know that they'll make, any of them will make it in this episode. I've got the plasma table set up. As I mentioned yesterday, I put a new sheet of steel on it. I used my little davit, used my little davit crane here. I'll tell you, I don't know what I would have done without you know, having that in terms of lifting the plate and putting the plates on the table. I mean, I don't have a forklift. I guess that would have been an alternative would, be, would have been a forklift. But then storing, storing the plates in the minimum space needed, I've got them in this vertical rack which rolls around and I can roll it over pick it up with the crane, lay it on the floor, then then pick it up with the lifting magnet and swing it over and set it on the table. So that's turned out to be a good decision. Uh, this four by four piece of quarter inch steel weighs 250 pounds. I mean, so there's no way I could, could manage it. All right, well, we're gonna cut out a couple pieces here and then um, work on assembling them into the this bogey carrier update the bogey carrier and see what it looks like and as with most of my stuff I I build one prototype sleep on it think about it overnight try to see if there's any you know in my mind if there's any issues with it and then um, as is often the case I come up with the change uh, not in my sleep, but as I'm as I'm mulling it over in my in my head. So, all right, we'll cut a couple of these open bogey plates and see how they see how they look. So I screwed up on that first cut. I stopped the cutter thinking it was going in the wrong place. I didn't, so I shouldn't have done that. So I started it over and I actually have a little mishap here where it didn't um, cut the circle out properly. I think I might need to increase my um, pierce delay. 
but it looks like I did get two two good ones out of here so we'll go check these two out see how they fit all right So let's take these wheels off. So I think <laughs> I think that even looks uh, even without considering the functional benefit of being able to clear dirt out between the wheels. I think it just looks a whole lot better as well. Um, all right, I'm going to stick it down on the box frame. We'll look at it. All right, so I just have I have to say that looks a whole lot better. I think that, uh, that'll work. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and we'll tack it up. This is the really the first time, well, second time. I used it yesterday for the first time just to tack up the bogey uh, carrier for the first time yesterday. My new Hobart 210 welder. So this, this one is 240 volts and has a lot more, a lot, I can tell, a lot more power. I've been using my Hobart Handler 140, which is 110 volt or 120 volt only. So it has limitations, especially on anything over eight or an inch or three sixteenths. Uh, <clears throat> so this, this one puts out a lot more, feeds wire faster, puts out a lot more heat, better penetration, I think. So I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna go ahead and weld this bogey carrier up. We'll see how it goes. Really be the first time I'm doing any significant welding with this particular welder.
I'm trying different feed speeds. Get used to this. The amount of metal that this deposits. I might slow the wire feed rate down. Weld this angle iron. Alright, well I know that I can tell that welder with this higher amperage and faster wire feed puts down a lot more uh, filler metal faster than my, my 120 volt welder. So trying to adjust to the right feed rate, um, but I don't, I don't think the welds look bad. It's it's definitely hot right now, so we'll let that let that <laughs> cool off. It'll take a couple of hours. All right, we'll come back. I've cut out the rest of the parts I need for the bogey carriers. Got the outside plates, uh, some inside plates, and then the top plates. And I decided to try. I'm going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work reusing a couple of the outside plates that I had cut and since I need to drill and tap them they had holes they had 5 16 holes I need to drill and tap them for 1 half 13 thread I've gone ahead and welded the holes up so I'm going to grind that off and then drill and tap hopefully hopefully that'll work it should work it should work fine all right, so I'll pull all these parts off the plasma table here and uh, we can drill, some hole, drill and tap some holes in some of the inside plates.
All right, so welding up those holes in those four plates saved me from having to cut out more plates on the plasma cutter and you know probably saved twenty five dollars worth of maybe maybe more fifty dollars worth of of steel twenty five dollars worth of steel so okay Got to tap all of these now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like I've got nine more to nine to tap. Alright, 
so it looks like I have one extra. One extra inner plate. So here's all the parts I need for the five more. bogey carriers and I'm not going to assemble these till I get the wheels in case the wheel is from a different lot and has any variation I don't want to risk you know assembling these using the wheels I have and then swapping out wheels only to find that they don't fit for some reason so it's best to wait till I get the wheels but have all the parts I need All right, we'll come back. What do we have this time? We have Dream Bone Twist Sticks. All right, one for Brew Brew, one for Butchie. Good boy. My good butchie. My good butchie. My good boys. My good puppies. Here's your gummy, your dish over here. Butchie is your dish right here. That's a good boy. Yeah, you're my good puppy. All right, I got the uh, tubing that I need to finish assembling the second tensioner wheel. This is the heavy wall tubing with the half inch ID. Need to cut 16. I need to cut 16 pieces for this wheel and I was too short, too short for the other wheel. So that makes a total of 18. Find my tape measure. And we'll just take another quick double check my measurement. As they say, measure twice, cut once. And I'm thinking I was cutting them to two and a half inches. So I need to cut 18 pieces to two and a half inches.
There you go. The leftover piece is exactly the exactly the right length. That's funny. Three, four, six, eight, ten. Twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen that fell down. There's one more on the floor.
All right, so that's the second track tensioner wheel. Let's go put the last two on the other. All right, so we were short two here and here, two of these tubes. I'm going to go ahead and And a runaway nut. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this week, this episode. We've got uh, one of the bogey carriers finished and all the parts cut out for the other five. So once the bogey wheels come, I can assemble the other five carriers and we can install them. I want to have all six of them so I can space them out, drill holes in the box beam and mount the bogey carriers. Once I do that, then I have I can set the chain, the total chain length. Can take the extra links out, add the master link, make sure that's all set up correctly. Once I do that, then I know how many track pads I have I need, and I can also adjust the track tensioner to its final position and then finish welding the web between the two tensioner arms and installing the tensioner uh, top the tractor three-point hitch top link which will be the, the actual tensioning device and the mount on the box beam that it'll attach to and hopefully by the end of the next episode we'll have a chain a tensioned chain around each side of the tractor 
then we can start talking about the actual treads and track design how we'll cut out the treads i'll take i'd have to actually take the take the chains off the tractor and one other thing that i didn't mention before uh is uh and i think this this is in response to some questions or comments at least about the appearance here that it'll look someone commented that it would look odd to have a sprocket on one end and you know a, fun, a funny looking wheel on the other end well they didn't say funny looking wheel but a wheel on the other end an idler and the plan is to cover this back sprocket with a plate similar to the idler it may be a slightly different diameter in order to clear the the, the track but it will be very similar I mean, basically the same, maybe slightly different diameter. And it'll be spaced away from this sprocket by an inch and a half. And I have the spacers. The reason I haven't done it yet is because I need to pull the inside spacers off and have longer studs um, pressed into them. So I, and the Na Napa was out of the studs. I'm waiting for them to get some more long studs in so I can take that spacer but these are the the two spacers they'll go on there and then i'm going to call it you know a idler vanity plate it'll just be for appearances only really no function to it other than cover up the sprocket and make it look the same as the the front idler so it won't be apparent from just looking at it that you've got a sprocket on the front and a sprocket on the back. Both bottom wheels will look the same. In case anybody's, some people are concerned about that. Uh, okay, so we'll come back uh, next episode working some more on the bogey carriers and hopefully uh, finish them up. If you haven't already subscribed, would appreciate it if you would, and that way you get notified of upcoming episodes and hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. I do read all the comments and answer as many as I can. Uh, ask that you maybe check, check the other comments if you're making a comment. I'm going if there's a question, and if it's a common question, a lot of people ask it, I'm probably only gonna answer it once to look and see what other people are asking. You might find the answer, find the answer there. So, all right, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.